Hi, my name is Carrie, and I am starting a YouTube channel to share some paintings with you. Um, this is my first one. We'll see how it goes, but welcome. I hope um, we all enjoy. I used to teach paint and sip painting classes in Hawaii, and it was really fun. And um, we used to paint lots of sea creatures and beautiful beach views and stuff like that. Um, and I've taught art in other forms, the more actually academic kinds, usually more to the teenagers in middle school. So I am hoping we can make a fun little channel together where if you want to paint, paint and sip style, meaning easy, relaxing, you know, maybe you've got your coffee with you in the morning, or maybe you've got a glass of wine in the evening, um, something like that. However, just something that you can kind of do relaxed painting along with me. Paint along. That's the idea. Um, so I want to walk you through some supplies and then we'll get started and we'll paint this lovely, lovely octopus once again. Um, so first and foremost, what you need, you need some brushes. Pretty much, I like to say, small, medium, and large. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. All right. So how do you figure out what's small, medium, and large? Well, honestly, it just depends on the canvas that you're painting on. Small, medium, and large is in proportion to the canvas. If this was a giant, giant canvas, this would probably be my small or medium. If it was tiny, you know, this guy could be actually medium to big, and I might need some tiny, fine little hairbrush. And I do have a couple of those laying around. Um, but yeah, just to get started, small, medium, and large. I like the flat ones for the medium and large. And then I have a flat there too, um, but over here, handy, I'm cheating, I guess. I've got a little bit of the pointed round one too. So that can be helpful. Sometimes I just say oh, this for the paint sips, I would do something like that, give people those. And it can be helpful to have more than one of each kind for just yourself at home. We never did it for paint and sips, but at home it's nice because then you just find yourself cleaning brushes less. You know, if you have maybe one big brush that's for blue tones, cool tones, and one that's for yellows and brights and warms, you know, those two things are going to mix and mess each other up if you're going back and forth with the same brush. But maybe if you have one for each or darks and lights, that kind of a thing. So it's up to you how many brushes you want. If you're on a budget, just get, I'll take that one out, just get small, medium, large, get one kind of pointed one. Don't mind the fact that mine's a little lopsided right now. It'll get fixed once I start painting. Um, and then you need something to paint on of course your canvas this one i actually uh was another canvas that i didn't like i didn't like the way the painting was going so i painted gesso over it i might talk about gesso more in another video but if you ever have a canvas that's not going so good why waste the money going out to buy another new one just gesso over this gesso is essentially like chalk in the form of paint and you can kind of re um purpose refurbish reset any painting so Brushes, canvas, old mug, water cup, whatever for water. I know it looks like I have black paint in here. That's what I had last time. Right now it's just got clean water in it. Um, something to paint on uh, palette wise, meaning to put your paints. This is an old thing I've used for years. I love it because it's plastic, which means once the paint dries, I can usually just peel it right off, which is kind of satisfying too, right? Um, but obviously I'm lazy and I let it be really messy a lot of times. So this is my palette, but you can use a paper plate, you know, just something disposable that you have on hand. I mean, it's good to be green. We don't want to create extra waste, right? But if you have some sort of extra paper plates or just even plastic plates left around that aren't doing anything, why not use them for your paints then give them an extra life that way. So however, whatever you need to do, you can go extremely cheap or you can get a palette. And now let's talk about paints. I've never done an unboxing video. This is probably the closest I'll come, but I wanted to open this brand new right here with you guys. I thought it'd be fun. So this is one of my favorite sets from Windsor and Newton. They're kind of good quality, but they also make some affordable student type stuff too. So this is like 21, 22 bucks on Amazon. Not bad at all. I'll see if I can figure out how to add a link. Um, but it kind of has just about every color 
you really need because you can mix everything else from these. So that's what I love about it. Um, I even feel like there might be an extra yellow here. They've got a lemon yellow and a cad yellow. The lemon yellow just has a tint of kind of green on it. So that'll be actually really nice for when we're drawing like ocean colors, getting some light coming in the ocean to have a slightly greenish yellow um, that won't mess up. If you have a warm yellow, it can mess up with, you know, blues and greens. So that's, a, that's something we'll talk about more. But theoretically, you just need your primaries, right? Your yellow, your red, your blue, and you can make everything from it. Well, that's great in theory, but in reality, pigments, paints are made from real things um, in real life. It's not just the theory. It's not just the color wheel. It's not working with light. We're waking, working with actual earthen materials that get put in a binder to create the paints. And very rarely do we find 100% pure medium blue or pure medium red. Almost all the pigments are slightly warm shade or cool shade of the primary color. So in this case, we have this cad red, that's a little bit of a warmer red. So I would never wanna make a purple because we all know that red plus blue makes purple. Well, if I take a red that's already on the warm side and I mix it with a blue for purple, it's gonna be really kind of a dull purple, kind of just yucky and slightly gray and not warm. But here we've got this permanent red that's a little closer to magenta. Uh, that's one thing that's maybe missing from this. I wish it was a true magenta that they had in this mix. Um, but that is slightly on that pink side. And so if you mix that with a purpley, I should have pointed to this, to the purpley blue, you'll get a really luscious, beautiful purple. Now, same thing, say I want to make a green, but I want it to be more of a teal. Well, I need to go for the cerulean blue because that's slightly cooler and I'd mix it with a lemon yellow and that would get me that lovely turquoise or teal color. Um, so for purples, I want the other ones, the warmer shades for the, um, for the cool tones for some sort of turquoise or teal, cerulean plus the lemon yellow would be good. Um, this green, the phalo green actually is like one of my best friends. So I'm glad it's in here, even though theoretically I could probably get it by taking my cool blue, my cerulean, mixing it with my lemon yellow, but notice they're both kind of light. So this phalo green is nice to have because it's already nice and deep. And I'll tell you for turquoises and teals, I actually don't even do what I just said. I take that phalo and I just mix it with some white and it comes out luscious and lovely. And I'll show you guys here in a minute. Um, sometimes a little blue, if I want it to be a little more the blue tone sometimes a little yellow if i want to lighten it a little bit so yellow ochre nice good stuff for you know earthen tone skins that's i guess one other thing i wish was in here if i'm doing portraiture i like a good um burnt sienna and that's not in here but burnt sienna can kind of be made by this plus some red plus i don't know maybe just a touch of the raw umber here which is another darker um darker brown here so they don't have black notice theoretically you can make black with these um i can show you how to do that but also it's sometimes it's handy to just have black so this is great range of colors to start with if you want even more i might just get the magenta the burnt sienna and then a pure black if you're using a lot of black just to make life easier on yourself so you don't have to mix it um, but otherwise this is perfect like i said 21 22 bucks and there you go. So I'm gonna start putting those out here over on my palette. And then um, I, hopefully you've got some paints and you can do the same. Get yourself a palette, put your paint colors out, get water cup, brushes, canvas, something to lean it on. I have an easel, this guy right here that's leaning on, but you don't even need that. You could just, you know, pile up some books on your kitchen table and lean it against that. Whatever works for you. guys to see it's a good range and I think it's a great set especially for kind of beginnings getting started um, I honestly think as you get more advanced you actually sometimes need the less colors because you learn to harmonize and limit your palette and you know the more you have kind of kind of just mess things up overwhelm things so this is good because it gives you enough range you know that it's not difficult to mix colors at the beginning but it's also still limited enough it has your essentials it doesn't get too much confused so check that out um, you'll see how much I gave myself. I can always pour out more if I need it, but again, I'd, I'd love to not waste paint, right?